It's been about a year since I released my video on how to start Loop on the Third, and I've got to say thank you so much for all the views, the comments, and suggestions. But I have to extend my thanks, most of all, to Monkey Punch. This video is long overdue, but I wanted to get everything right since I really do love Loop on the Third, and I didn't want to leave anything out. The more I looked into Monkey Punch and his legacy, the more I found myself enthralled by his work, but was rather surprised by how little interviews he did and how much of his life wasn't very well documented. Now, after watching Lupin the Third the First, I feel like it's a good time to finally release this video. So let's take a closer look at Monkey Punch and the legacy he left behind. Born on May 26, 1937 as Kazuhiko Kaido, in his youth he was passionate about his drawings. It wasn't until he got into middle school that he took his talents more seriously and he began writing for the school newspaper. A rivalry sort of developed between myself and the other artists who were doing the same thing. It became a challenge. We kept trying to improve and to make our work better. Before you knew it, there were these collections of our work that started to accumulate. And actually, one of my rivals also became a professional manga artist. We started young, and a lot of people followed us. Monkey got a bit more recognition working under Shitaro Ishimori, the creator of shows like Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, and Cyborg 009. Creating a cover for the weekly manga action in 1967, Monkey distinguished himself from other artists by following his editor's recommendation of just make it crazy fun. According to an interview with Go Nagai, yes, that Go Nagai. My case was different because I drew adults from the get-go. At the time, I was constantly copying and studying drawings of girls in American magazines like Mad and photos of women from Playboy magazines. Monkey wasn't very well versed in storytelling. He would often find himself with his characters running, running on the nose and running out of pages and coming to some sort of conclusion. Other mangas written by Monkey, such as Pinkie Punk and The Time Agent, which all I could really find was the cover of the book, were similar in the fast pace, mystery, slapstick, raunchy humor, you know, what most readers and watchers of Lupin the Third have become accustomed to. In the aforementioned interview, he mentioned some of his earliest inspirations were mystery stories and characters like D'Artagnan from The Three Musketeers, who he felt what he wanted Lupin to represent. He also took inspirations from shows like Tom and Jerry. Of course, we can't talk about Monkey Punch without talking about the manga that put him in the spotlight, Lupin the Third. If you want more information on how to start the anime series, check out this video. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. Lupin the Third was supposed to be a three month long project, bundled in with collections from other short stories, but the story did so well it became a symbol for him. One of his editors suggested the moniker Monkey Punch while he was still writing his doujins. Who knows where that name could have came from. The name was only supposed to last until the end of that series. But once Lupin the Third took off, he had no choice but to keep the name in order to keep the association. When I first started working on this video originally, I wanted to find more mangas and animes to watch by Monkey Punch, and also recommend to you guys, because I believe that's more than half the fun. Remember how I mentioned that Lupin the Third has started as a collection of short stories? Well, there's an anime series called Mankatsu. There is an ad for it on the TMS YouTube, which I'll make sure to also leave in the description. All the short stories are made by Monkey himself, which include a very early version of Lupin the Third. I haven't found a legitimate way to watch the series yet, but if I find them, I'll make sure to also update that description. Although, just from the commercials hosted by the TMS channel, you can see that the series has the same art styles and humor that we find so iconic with series like Lupin the Third. Any Lupin the Third shorts that you do find will be more focused on the gags than they are about some mystery filled adventure. There's also more of a focus on the adult humor, this was unfortunately one of his very last works, which is wild considering how hard it is to find footage of it and how dated it looks. It came out in 2003. The last Lupin the Third related content that he worked on was in 1996. That's right, Monkey hasn't been involved with Lupin in a very long time, stated in the New York Times. I have to be practical about it. Lupin the Third is no longer mine when it was made into an anime. Many producers and animators have played with the work. This is alright with me. There are many iterations of Lupin the Third. Does this mean we'll ever see some crazy crossover with all the Lupins across the universe that could trump even the Avengers? Oh, wait, they already did that. 
Monkey knew fully well that Lupin the Third lived as long as it did because it changed from an adult-oriented manga to a more whimsical, family-friendly Lupin the Third. Lupin the Third Part Three was the closest we got to the original, but people tend to say that it's not a real Lupin series because of its wacky art style and zany stories. Monkey has always been drawing, beating out the likes of Dragon Ball and Fist of the North Star. And while we don't know a whole lot on his life and there are sparse interviews, there's a lot that we still don't know about Monkey. And maybe that's what he wanted. Works done by Monkey Punch have more or less been forgotten and are basically non-existent in the West. But why? It's clear that Monkey's work was borderline, you know, rapey. Locking a lot of the stories in Japan. Does that mean that we should hashtag cancel Monkey Punch? I don't think so. This was just a product of a different time. Much like shows like Johnny Bravo, where the main character just hounds on women, Monkey did a good job of summing this up in this quote. Yes, I do think there are some things that don't come across, especially the humor. There's a lot of Japanese humor that doesn't make it outside of the country and is not felt the same way. However, I think it's not just America. I think it's worldwide. I think there are a lot of different cultures that do affect how people interpret my work. But it's not something I really worry about too much. I mean, even Ego Raptor dropped the end bombs in some of his older videos, but Aaron has clearly grown from that, and thankfully Lupin and his world have also grown. Take Fujiko, she no longer represents a James Bond girl who changed every chapter to chapter, but instead became a troubled character with a strong role who didn't need Lupin to fix her problem. I don't know if it's a bad thing that we'll be losing some of Monkey Punch's stories and in turn a chapter in the manga history, or if it's just better that it's lost to the sands of time so that the person can be preserved in the positive light. We all remember Lovecraft for his horror stories in Cthulhu, not because he named his cat between COVID and trying to pull in as much data as Monkey, it's been really difficult. I've been reading all of your comments and while I haven't replied to all of them, it, it's really special to get a new message in my inbox. We are just about done setting up a Discord and I do have a My Anime List account and if you guys want to follow it and see what I think on other animes, you know, feel free to follow me. Thank you again so much for all your support.